Have you ever wondered what Hitler and the Nazis were looking for in Iceland? An intriguing question, isn't it? The Second World War, a time of turmoil and strife, had its share of mysteries and secrets. One such enigma is Adolf Hitler's interest in the distant icy landscapes of Iceland. What could have drawn the attention of the Nazi regime to this remote island nation in the North Atlantic? To understand this, we need to take a deep dive into the annals of history. Scene script. World War II was a global conflict and no corner of the world was completely untouched, not even the remote island of Iceland. Iceland, a tiny island nation in the North Atlantic, found itself in a unique geopolitical situation at the onset of World War II. Despite its small size and population, Iceland held a strategic importance that was impossible to ignore. Its location in the middle of the North Atlantic made it an ideal waypoint for naval and air traffic between North America and Europe. This made it a potential linchpin in the control of the Atlantic and a prize for any major power in the war. In the late 30s, Iceland was still a sovereign kingdom in a personal union with Denmark. However, when Denmark fell to the Nazis in April of 1940, Iceland found itself in an unexpected position of independence. It was a nation left to its own devices, and it declared neutrality in the conflict that was consuming the world. However, neutrality in a time of war can be a precarious position. Iceland's strategic importance meant that it was of interest to both the Allies and the Axis powers. Its location could provide a critical advantage in controlling the shipping lanes of the North Atlantic, a lifeline for Britain's survival, and a potential path for Nazi submarines to wreak havoc on Allied convoys. Yet, despite its potential strategic value, Iceland lacked a military of its own, making it vulnerable to occupation. The island's rugged terrain and harsh weather conditions added another level of complexity to the situation. Any military force looking to gain a foothold would need to grapple with these harsh realities. So, how does Hitler and Nazi Germany fit into this picture? The Nazis had a keen interest in the North Atlantic island for a variety of reasons. Firstly, Iceland's strategic location was hard to ignore. Nestled in the North Atlantic it sat like a sentinel between Europe and North America. This made Iceland a valuable chess piece in the global game of warfare. If Nazi Germany could establish a base in Iceland it would have a strategic advantage in controlling the Atlantic shipping lanes, potentially cutting off Britain from its crucial American supplies. But the Nazis' interest in Iceland wasn't just strategic. The island's unique climate and geographical position made it an ideal spot for weather prediction. Weather patterns in Europe could often be predicted by observing the meteorological conditions in Iceland. If the Nazis could control these forecasts, they could potentially gain an upper hand in planning their military operations. However, the Nazis' interests in Iceland didn't stop at the practical. There were also alleged connections to occult and supernatural theories. Heinrich Himmler, one of Hitler's closest allies, was deeply interested in the occult and the paranormal. He believed in the existence of a master race descended from ancient Aryan gods, and some theories suggest that he saw Iceland as the potential ancestral home of this race. There were even rumors of expeditions sent to Iceland in search of the Holy Grail and other mystical artifacts, while these trips were officially described as archaeological or anthropological studies, many believed that they had a more esoteric purpose. The Nazis were known to be interested in any advantage, whether practical or mystical, that could help them in their quest for global domination. So, with all these factors in play, it might seem surprising that Iceland remained untouched by Nazi boots. One would think that this island brimming with strategic, scientific and even mystical potential would be a prime target. However, Nazi Germany never managed to set foot on Iceland, but why? The British beat the Nazis to it. A simple sentence that encapsulates the pivotal move made by Britain in 1940. The British invasion of Iceland, a move that was as unexpected as it was strategic, proved to be a key turning point in the chess game of World War II. The invasion was primarily a preventive measure. Britain, aware of Nazi Germany's interest in Iceland, decided to act first to prevent the island from becoming a German stronghold in the North Atlantic. This was at a time when Britain stood alone against the Axis powers and the potential of a Nazi-occupied Iceland was a threat they could not afford to ignore. On the 10th of May 1940, Operation Fork was launched. British military forces arrived in the capital city of Reykjavik, catching the Icelandic government and the world by surprise. Despite the suddenness of the invasion, there was minimal resistance. The Icelandic government, while protesting the violation of its neutrality, chose to cooperate rather than resist, a decision that likely prevented bloodshed. 
The British invasion effectively threw a wrench into Nazi Germany's plans. The Nazis had hoped to use Iceland as a base for their naval and air forces, giving them a strategic advantage in the North Atlantic. With Iceland under British control, this became impossible. Moreover, the invasion allowed the British to secure vital sea lanes in the North Atlantic, ensuring the safe passage of their convoys. In addition to its military implications, the invasion had political ramifications as well. It demonstrated Britain's resolve to stand against Nazi aggression, and marked one of the first proactive steps taken by the Allies in World War II. The British occupation of Iceland lasted until 1941, when the responsibility was transferred to the United States. Yet the impact of the invasion lingered much longer. It was a clear signal that Britain was willing to take the initiative and make tough decisions in the face of adversity. This move by the British was a significant setback for the Nazis. A setback that altered the course of World War II, demonstrating that the game of war is often won not just by brute force, but also by strategic foresight and the audacity to act. The British invasion marked a turning point for Iceland during the war. As the British forces firmly established their presence, the United States, a soon-to-be ally, was not far behind. By July of 1941, the American troops had replaced the British, marking the beginning of what was known as the American Occupation. This wasn't a hostile takeover though, in fact the Icelandic government had requested the shift in power, hoping to foster a relationship with the United States that could outlast the war. And indeed the American presence had a profound impact on Iceland. Economically, the country flourished. The sudden influx of foreign soldiers provided jobs, stimulated business, and led to an overall increase in the standard of living. But it wasn't just about economics. The cultural impact was equally significant. The Americans brought with them a taste of their lifestyle, their music, their movies, their fashion, and it permeated through Icelandic society, leaving a lasting influence that can still be seen today. The end of the war did not mean the end of Iceland's strategic importance though, in 1949, Iceland became a founding member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO, despite not having its own standing army. This was a decision met with controversy at home, as many Icelanders were and still are, staunchly pacifist. However, the government saw NATO membership as a necessary safeguard in a rapidly changing world. Iceland's role in World War II might not be as well known, but it was certainly significant. From the British invasion to the American occupation, and finally to its membership in NATO, Iceland navigated the tumultuous waters of the war with a strategy that prioritized its people's welfare and future security. Today, the legacy of these decisions lives on, shaping Iceland's position in the global landscape. In retrospect, Hitler's interest in Iceland can be seen as a lost opportunity. As we delve into the conclusion of this intriguing chapter in history, we can't help but reflect on the strategic significance of Iceland during World War II. Nestled in the North Atlantic this small island nation was a crucial chess piece in the grand scheme of the war. Its geographical location midway between North America and Europe made it a desirable asset for both the Allies and the Axis powers. The Nazis under Hitler's command were particularly interested in Iceland, seeing it as a potential springboard for their Atlantic operations. They had plans, grand plans, that were never realized. The British invasion of Iceland in 1940 effectively thwarted these ambitions, marking a turning point in the island's history and the broader trajectory of World War II. Despite being a remote island with a small population, Iceland found itself at the heart of international conflict, a testament to the global reach of the war. The political and military maneuvers surrounding Iceland had lasting impacts on its international relations. After the war, Iceland shifted its alliances, becoming a founding member of NATO in 1949 and solidifying its ties with the United States. The Nazis' failed plans for Iceland highlight the unpredictability of war and the intricacies of global strategy. Hitler's lost opportunity in Iceland is a reminder of the many what-ifs that litter the landscape of history. It underscores the importance of strategic locations in warfare and the far-reaching implications of military decisions. As we look back on this chapter of history, we are reminded of the global reach of World War II and the unexpected places it touched. The story of Iceland during World War II is a crucial piece of the larger puzzle, a testament to the ripple effects of global conflict and the enduring impact of history. So, what can we take away from this exploration of Hitler's interest in Iceland? We've journeyed through the icy landscapes of World War II history, unearthing the Nazi interests in this remote island.
We've seen how the British invasion influenced events and reflected on the aftermath and legacy. We've considered the conclusion, Hitler's lost opportunity. It's a reminder of how history's complexity reaches far beyond what we often imagine. As we delve into history we often find that even the most remote corners of the world have their own stories to tell in the grand tapestry of global events.